Um, I will uh, jump straight into this. I hope you all are ready for, uh, for about uh, 30 minutes of uh, absolute uh, destruction. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm going to get vulnerable. I'm going to talk a lot about mistakes. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, how we all deal with mistakes. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, mistakes that lead to what we might all consider the absolute worst outcome. So let's talk about that. I think uh, when it comes to our professional lives, uh, firings are, are basically a worst case scenario. So uh, I want to talk first about the first vendor that I ever fired. He was my CPA for three years. He was the first CPA I ever hired. And uh, uh, he handled our taxes for, uh, for three years and did a, did a fantastic job. Um, but I think he was getting busier and busier as time went on. And uh, on top of that, I was getting busier and busier. So uh, you can see uh, that we were getting pretty close to the deadline. I called him a week before the tax filing deadline and uh, told him that I'd get all the information to him by the next day. His verbal response to me was, uh, we're in crunch time right now, uh, I'm, I'm completely swamped, I won't be able to get to that until later. Uh, and I said, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get this stuff to you this late, uh, but I understand. And, uh, and so basically this thread is, uh, I had sent him that stuff and called him and he said he was too busy. And uh, then he followed up with me uh, the day before the tax deadline and said, hey, can we set up a call? I'm ready to go. And I said, you told me you were too busy. And so I ended up filing uh, with somebody else because you were too busy for me. And his response was, wow, thanks for telling me. I wouldn't have wasted my time. I have spent a lot of time on accounting and tax questions for you this year for free with the expectation of filing your taxes and being paid. Um, I never responded to his email. I never called him back. Uh, I never referred business to him again. And uh, uh, I've literally never spoken another word to this guy in our small city of Orlando that's, uh, that's saying something. That response um, is probably a response that we've all felt like sending to a client at some point or another. I understand why he may have sent this, this email. I, I, get, I get the sentiment behind it. Uh, but the fact that he sent it and had zero empathy for, for what was actually communicated, uh, on top of the fact that this was an emotional response, and it was a little bit of a slap in the face. Um, so ask yourself, uh, now uh, perhaps you know, being on both sides of this, uh, how, much, how much value, how much money did he lose by sending one snap email, oh, this wow. particular CPA? Oh, wow. Just from me alone, since, since this happened, uh, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars with our current CPA and their bookkeeping service. And on top of that, I've referred multiple accounts, much larger than myself, to my new CPA. In addition to that, my new CPA eventually hired us to build their website and SEO their website, where we got them to number one in Orlando for the number one search keyword phrase uh, for CPAs in Central Florida. And um, she has now retired uh, a millionaire. Uh, and this guy is... Uh, is still pretty much exactly in the same place he was um, back then. So let's take a look at that from both sides. Then. So let's talk a little bit about, about Ego. Uh, he, he sent that, e e uh, that email to me as a, as a snap Ego defense. We all carry this, this, this burden around with us. Our ego gets in the way of everything. It tells us we're way more important than our clients. It tells us we're way more important in the moment of doing anything. Ego gets in the way of empathy. Uh, ego gets in the way of professionalism. And so uh, anytime you feel, you feel 
the rising urge to defend yourself, uh, I would ask that you take a step back and ask if that's your ego talking or if it's a, if it's a rational, logical, professional response that's, that's flying through your head. So let's talk about what creates firings. Uh, I thought about this really hard, and I thought about it for a very long time, and I feel like I've, I've come up with a very succinct way to talk about why firings happen. And I think 100% of firings happen because of this. So either you are not creating value, the client does not see value, or you are disconnected with the client on a professional or a personal level. So, let's talk about what you do. Uh, now, when I talk about clients, you can replace that word with boss or employee. You can replace, you can, this works all the way around in a full circle. So, uh, if you're in your head, if you're thinking of a situation that you're in, whether you're an employee, whether you're the boss doing the firing, or whether uh, you're being fired yourself, um, everything that I say still, still applies. So let's talk about what you do. Um, let's, I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of being a freelancer or an agency that's being fired um, for, for the bulk of this. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what do you do? There's four steps specifically uh, that everybody should perform when they are being fired or in the process of being fired. Uh, and number one, is collecting information. Um, and it's sometimes really hard to do. It's, it's hard to remember how critical this step is. When it's happening, oftentimes there's a very uh, gut-wrenching, visceral, emotional outpouring that comes from something like this. You've put so much time and effort into it, you've put love into it, whatever, whatever you've done up to that moment is being rejected. Uh, it's, it's not quite as bad as heartbreak, but it's a mini version of that, right? So, and it, and it hits us, it hits us in a, it hits all, all of us in a, in a way that, that taps into our deep subconscious, that we all have this desperate need to be, to be appreciated and valued for what we do. And so when we get fired, that, that, that little version of yourself is really getting stomped on. And, uh, and the reaction is, is, is hard to get a hold of sometimes. And so you forget that you have to remove that ego from the situation and approach this from a professional standpoint. And if you are a professional, the first thing you're going to want to do is ask why. Why are we being fired? And you need to dig in to find out. And, it, and, if you, and this is assuming you don't already know. If you already know, then, then you have a different problem. Uh, but if you don't know all of the reasons, or if the reasons being given don't sound authentic to you, Please don't hesitate to dig in. Digging in shows that, and, and again, in the middle of a firing, your job is to be professional. If you're a professional in a firing, and, and, and actually the purpose of this talk today is to help everybody in here grow your business. If you handle firings properly, I promise you that you will grow your business. So, when you dig in, you're going to be asking questions like, is there anything we could have done better? You're going to ask questions like, did my team member help you in this way? And uh, from what you said, did they fail you in this other way? And if they did, what they, could they have done differently? Uh, find out whether it's a, sometimes it's a, it's a personal thing, or, or maybe it's a communication issue. Uh, but the more you know, uh, the better prepared you'll be, and we'll talk about that more. <coughs> so, after you've kind of dug in and you've asked questions, but also this happens simultaneously with step two as part of the process as well. Uh, I want to talk about taking the high road. The high road. It is very, very easy to get defensive about your work. It's very easy to to jump in and start. Uh, uh, explaining or excusing uh, why there was a disconnect in the value that you're bringing to somebody. And what I'm going to tell you right now is if you're graceful in firing, 
it creates a high level of respect. It can. It has the ability to. And I'll give some examples of that later on as well. So, and when I say take the high road, um, it doesn't mean get walked on. That's different. It doesn't mean accepting everything that the client might use as a, as a weapon for the firing. Sometimes clients make up excuses for a firing when it's actually a different reason. Uh, it's your job to get to the bottom of it, but while you're getting to the bottom of it, you're still delivering value to that client. You're still proving that you were the right choice in the beginning regardless, right? So uh, let's say they say that uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we didn't like we didn't like the design that you presented to us. It's not a good enough design, uh, and we don't feel like you understand our brand very well. Uh, your high road response to that, well, let's talk about the low road. The low road response to that is, we asked a lot of questions, we dug in, we spent this much time on it. Uh, uh, everybody we talked to said it was amazing work. I don't understand why you would feel that way. Right? That's a low road approach. That is not giving grace to a client. That's not giving empathy to a client. And that's a slap in the face of their opinion. The reality is, is design is the most subjective part of any project. So uh, that's not an option. The, the high road is, I understand how you might feel that way. Maybe there is a disconnect here. I believe that if given another chance, we could probably find a way to turn this ship around and make this right. Our mission is to make this right by you and to deliver an amazing product to you. Uh, and, and then from there, they're making a choice, either to give you another chance or to continue with the firing. Likely the firing is going to continue, but you've just planted a seed in their mind that, that you're capable, you were capable of doing that project appropriately. It gives them a lot less uh, cannon fodder for later, if they're talking about you. <coughs> your job in taking the high road is actually defending your reputation. You have to defend your reputation. Uh, and that means, even in getting fired, going the extra mile. Uh, and of course, if you can't read it up there, the, uh, the pro tip in this scenario is, um, any time a conversation has the potential to have politics or emotion involved, Always find a way to make that meeting in person or over the phone. Uh, email tone uh, will, will destroy conversations like this and harm your reputation no matter what your intentions are. Text just does not carry uh, a, a high road tone of voice by default, unfortunately. So the next step here, this is for people who aren't um, freelancers, but in a way, uh, even if you are a freelancer, this applies in a certain way. Um, but step four, we'll go into it in more detail. But if you run a team, if it's not just you, uh, this step is critical. If you're being fired, or if, you've ha if you have been fired, uh, you need to communicate the details of that event with the rest of your team. You do not want the rest of your team later to come up to you and say, hey, what happened there? And then you have to explain as a reaction instead of being proactive with your team. Uh, culture. Uh, is really important here, being transparent. Uh, it freaks people out when clients fire an agency. Uh, they want to know all the reasons why. Um, but your job in communicating internally is to clear the air, number one. And number two, not to get over excited about the situation. It is uh, when communicate, communicating internally with a team, no matter how bad the firing was, no matter what went wrong, uh, whether it was a, a, a minor issue or a major issue, it is super important to take that middle road and uh, uh, approach it from a stoic professional perspective and just simply give the facts. Here's what happened. Here's why this is happening. And, uh, and it's no big deal. Uh, at the end of the day, no matter what internal, internal communication is, is that this is no big deal. Whether it's a big deal or not, it's not a big deal because this is an opportunity to learn and get better as an agency. So, and when you're communicating internally, not only are you sharing with with, with all of the stakeholders on the team, uh, what happened and why, but if somebody else on the team has some culpability or some responsibility or accountability for why the situation happened, 
then that has to be addressed with that person um, in greater detail. Uh, you have to figure out, you have to figure out um, more about it, which is where we get into step four. So once you've gathered all the data, uh, once you've taken the high road in your exit with this client, once you've communicated with your team, the last and the most important step, and the one that's the easiest to skip, is spending time to internalize this lesson and figuring out how to make that a part of your DNA as a part of your learning process. Uh, if you do a Google search for, for failure or mistakes or firings, uh, you'll see a million platitudes from all of the most successful people in the world talking about learning from their mistakes and how, how the definition of success is learning from your mistakes. At the end of the day, they all come down to that same sense. Uh, and so in this scenario, in the beginning, when we had our first couple firings as an agency, I didn't know how to do this step four. Um, we were so busy just getting work done and helping the next client that we never took the time to go back and, and not, only, not only audit kind of what happened and why it happened, but also to make some, some specific changes across whether it's our processes uh, or whether it's specific uh, team member approaches to projects or whether it was the types of clients we were doing business with. There were a lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, and sometimes it was uh, managing expectations. Like there was all these different reasons for all these different firings. And um, we were not getting better as an agency, uh, agency until we started spending time internalizing. And that means, uh, uh, for me now, it means meditating. Um, and it's something that I only recently started doing. And um, going into meditation with an intention. Uh, spending 20 minutes um, focused on my breathing and, and asking, asking myself in my own head, asking myself what went wrong, why did it go wrong, and what can I do about it? And usually by the end of that 20 minutes, I've, I'm either already starting to come up with solutions or, or my mind is saying, uh, we need more time. It's too complicated. We're not ready yet. Your ego's still in the way. Uh, but I'm getting feedback back. Uh, and that, spending that time on meditation has actually been one of the most valuable internalizing tools uh, uh, especially in regards to, uh, to firing. So, uh, and uh, uh, other people, um, prayer works fantastic for this too. So uh, meditation and prayer kind of, uh, they, they, they work, they both work well depending on what your, your specific needs are. All right, so uh, that's kind of like top level theory stuff. We're gonna spend, we're gonna spend the next uh, 15 minutes or so uh, jumping into uh, specific, real-world, practical examples, how we handled it, sometimes poorly, and what the end result of, uh, of each of these specific scenarios are. And just as a quick heads up, um, uh, I'm mentioning kind of, uh, I'm not mentioning any specific names, I'm just kind of giving general industries uh, for the quote client in question or the team member in question. Uh, but really, in a lot of cases, some of these are hybrids of multiple clients just compiled together um, for the purpose of story. But these are all, these are, these are all things that have actually happened, or, uh, or it might be a hybrid of two events that happened. All right. So, uh, first, the first, uh, the first um, specific example I want to give today is probably... Uh, the largest firing we've ever had. We didn't do anything wrong on this project. It was, it was actually how we handled it afterwards that made all the difference in the world. So uh, it was a large organization, and uh, they needed us for a, for a complicated web development project. And that project needed uh, four full-time developers, uh, probably for a period of about 90 days is what we had it estimated for. So uh, the, the initial project planning went fantastically well. We had very detailed um, specifications on the project. Everything was cooking with Crisco. It was awesome. 
Uh, and then uh, there was a there was a 30-day lead time um, leading up into the project where we aligned all of our assets and got our team put together. And the day before the project started, I, uh, I contacted the client to remind them that the kickoff meeting was the following day, and the client did not respond. The following day, at the kickoff meeting, we all jumped on the conference call, the client never showed up. Side note, this client paid 100% in advance because they needed to get it out in December for tax season. Their, their budget for the year hadn't been spent. So they, they, they had paid for this, this large project 100% in advance. But they never showed up to their own kickoff meeting. Uh, a week later, I get an email from our contact saying, I'm so sorry, uh, but our department has been consumed by another department within the organization, and we no longer need your services for that project. Uh, I'm thinking in my head, how does this play out? Our contract, uh, at the time, our contract did not cover this scenario. I, I had no idea I had to plan for a situation like that. Our contracts do now cover the situation, but at the time there was nothing in writing. So what do we do? Uh, are we writing a check back for the whole amount to this client? Uh, side note, I have a crazy amount of expenses and time in on this project already. Am I about to get in a legal battle with a client to get money for something that we literally never did and never broke ground on? So I'm freaking out inside my head. I am in panic mode. And this is where mentors come in. Uh, I had a mentor that I met through WordCamp uh, five or six years ago. And one phone call later, that mentor said, all you have to do is get them on the phone and say these three sentences and you're good to go. I was like, what? That's all I have to do? They're like, yep, that's all you have to do. Called with the client, said those three sentences to the client. The client's like, good, no problem, we're good to go. And, and, and everything was good. There was no contract dispute. We ended up, uh, we ended up uh, basically, what it was was uh, we set it up so that our expenses on the project uh, needed to be covered. Um, and all we had to do was just explain to them that we could prove our expenses. And as long as we can prove our expenses, then we were good to go. So we ended up keeping 50% of that total retainer for never doing the work. And everything worked out, and everybody rode off into the sunset on that one. And uh, that the lesson learned there is uh, find people who have done larger projects than you, make friends with them, and be prepared when you start to grow, because you're going to need their help. All right. So this one is particularly embarrassing. Um, back in 2006, we were growing faster than I could handle, and I didn't have any experience with scaling agency services. I was having a hard time finding help. And so I was doing all the jobs, uh, and everywhere where I didn't have help, I was doing that job too, and I was working somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 hours a week. And uh, we started a project, and the project was supposed to take uh, it's supposed to take six weeks from start to finish. Three weeks into it, uh, we had not delivered anything to the client. I literally just didn't have enough time to get to them. They had paid their upfront deposit, and uh, they were asking me, hey, where's the stuff, where's the stuff, where's the stuff? And I'm like, oh, we'll get it to you next week, we'll get it to you next week, we'll get it to you next week, three weeks into it. They didn't have the stuff, and they were like, okay, this isn't working out, we need to bail on this, peace out, uh, and uh, how does this work? So uh, the reality is, I still could have gotten that project done on time. We had enough leeway in there to do it, and uh, I believe that we could still make it happen. But we had lost the faith of the client. They didn't feel like we were going to be able to deliver on the value. So, but I had a contract. So here's a high road, low road situation. I could have held them to the contract. I could have told them that. Uh, we're going to do it anyway, and uh, we're going to keep the money, and uh, you, we, we've got a contract, and we're just going to follow, follow the, the law here. Uh, and, or I could say, you know what? I completely understand. We're going to refund all of your money, and, uh, and we're, going to, we're going to make sure that, uh, that you're taken care of. And then also, in addition to that, uh, if you need a referral for somebody who might have more time than us, I'd be happy to give you a referral as well. Uh, and the way that this ended up happening is that they decided to go for the full refund. They took all the money back. They absolutely fired us. 
we never did business with them again. But six months later, I sent them an email and I said, hey, I just wanted you to know that we fixed all of our processes and we now have solved the problem of delivering projects on time and I want you to know that uh, you firing us was a huge favor to us because it helped us get better and we appreciated the way that you did it. Six months after that, they referred business to us. One of our larger accounts that's still uh, in business, doing business with us five years later. So that was a firing that we were able to turn something really negative into something really positive just by taking the high road and then taking the high road to, to an extreme, right? We just kept pushing on it. Um, and the real reason I sent that email six months later was part of defending my reputation. I don't want anybody out there saying, hey, that, that agency doesn't deliver on time. I wanted to make sure that they knew that they were a part of us getting better, right? Um, and uh, uh, <coughs> any time a firing happens on both sides, um, everyone's job is to find a way to separate the egos and work on, on improving or protecting reputations. So jumping over to doing all right. Uh, Shredding company. So, <laughs> uh, this is common. Um, if, you, if you work in, in, in the agency world, as you start to go up, upstream and work with larger and larger clients, or let's say you work with a small client and they become a large client, what happens over time is, is uh, they start paying your agency more and more money to do all sorts of different jobs until you're doing like six jobs for the same client. And then they look at their bill every month and they're like, oh my gosh, I could just hire some people to do this. And that's what they do. Over and over again, it's a cycle. So uh, larger clients will oftentimes uh, uh, have a, uh, whether they hire a new controller in or a new accountant in, or they get a new uh, CFO uh, and they decide, oh my gosh, that bill's too big. We can definitely do this cheaper in-house. They bring it in-house, they fire you. Nothing personal, it's just money. Uh, Taking the high road when that happens is key. So uh, in this specific scenario, uh, we, the new marketing director at this, at this uh, shredding company, <laughs> uh, he was technically our enemy. It was his job to come in and replace us as, as, as an agency in this scenario. So he was technically our enemy. And we could have chosen to throw him under the bus with the CEO because he, didn't, he had a lot of questions that he really should have known before he was hired, right? But we chose not to throw him under the bus. We instead took the high road and we gave him everything we needed. We even gave him a little bit of education. We wished him the best of luck. Side note, we're not, we're not idiots though. We had a separate conversation with the CEO on the backside. With the CEO expressing some of our concerns, we said, this guy's probably a good guy. There's a couple things that he could probably get some help with. I want to let you know that if, if anything goes sideways with him, we still have your back. If it goes well with him, we may be a good support for him. That conversation with the CEO and helping him without throwing him under the bus actually created allies from a firing. And they still do business with us to this day. And they still hire us for projects that are a little bit too complicated for their new marketing team. Um, but also as a reminder, uh, for those of you who haven't been caught in the cycle before, uh, quick, quick kind of outline of that. What happens is, is uh, these bigger organizations will bring their, their marketing or their design in-house uh, and their development team sometimes, they'll bring it all in-house. And that will be great for them for about three or four years. But all of those people working in that creative department for one organization, they, they stagnate. <coughs> As creatives, they stagnate because they're working on the same thing all day, every day, and they don't iterate and learn like we do in the open source community. So they have no idea what the new tech coming out is. They have no idea what all the new stuff coming out is, and most of them don't innovate. And so what happens is, is they stagnate, they burn out, and, and then that department starts to tank, and, and, and that organization realizes, oh my gosh, uh, and after they've given them raises for three or four years, we're paying as much as we were paying the agency for half the service we were getting. We need to fire these guys and hire an agency. And the cycle starts again. So uh, be prepared for that cycle. It's usually, uh, depending on, on the, the industry and the size of the organization, those cycles tend to run around five years or so. 
So if you're in it for the long haul, uh, take that high road and be there on the other end of that five years. Uh, I'm going to blow through some of the rest of these as we're getting, getting closer on time. Uh, we're going to go... Um, uh, <laughs> this, one, this one was a really tough one. Um, this was a large company in South Florida uh, that we've been working with. Uh, it, they do some, some wholesale work. They do, uh, I think they do about $2 million in sales per month on their e-commerce website uh, that, that, that we built and maintain the back end for them. And uh, the project manager was awesome. We had a fantastic relationship with the project manager. We had no contact with, with anyone else in their organization. Uh, and uh, that guy made a couple mistakes uh, that, that led to some losses in revenues for the organization and uh, basically uh, when his back was to the wall he had, he had a, he was either going to keep his job uh, or uh, by throwing us under the bus and saying uh, it, was, it was our fault or uh, he was going to get fired. That was it. Those were his two options. So it was either him or us. And in his defense, he called us and, and asked for our permission to throw us under the bus. <laughs> and uh, uh, our relationship wasn't with the CEO. This was a very tough decision because at the end of the day, as the owner of the company, um, making sure that we're profitable and growing as an agency is, is the key to our success. And here we are about to lose a, a potentially large contract. And uh, it, it really, this decision, I mean, just for everybody in the room in this position, this decision can go either way. Um, I'll tell you what we did and how it ended up, but uh, again, this could have been the wrong decision here. So in this scenario, um, because we didn't have the relationship of the CEO of the company, I felt like even if, if this guy got fired and somebody else came in, that there's no guarantee that we're gonna, that we're gonna keep this work. And in fact, we knew that their organization was very, very hard to work with, and he was the only person in that organization that was actually easy to work with. He was the only one that spoke our language. And so we opted to, uh, to let him throw us under the bus. Uh, and, and we lost the contract. And three months later, uh, he hired a new prime contractor in the position technically that we were in previously, but really, it was just some freelancer somewhere uh, who wasn't doing any of the work, and that freelancer subcontracted all the work to us. <laughs> so we got the job back, and we still work for them today, and their CEO still doesn't know. <laughs> so uh, that, one, that one, we made the decision uh, relationship over money, and it, and it worked out. Um, as a general rule, uh, relationships over money is usually the right way to go. Um, but I'll take that a step further, and I'll just say that um, if you're doing, if you're, if you're struggling with what seems right versus what is actually right, then your ego's in the way. Remove your ego, and doing what's actually right every time will make life a lot easier. All right. So uh, this one is uh, this one's a, this one's an interesting one. Uh, we were we were pulled in by uh, a, uh, a, a a high level uh, marketing director for for financial and international financial firm, and uh, she pulled us in to to rebuild their website and redo their marketing and help them with messaging online and uh, and also assist with their branding. We went in and we met with their stakeholders and their C level executives, uh, and we had a fantastic meeting. And um, at the end of the meeting, the, uh, their CEO was like, hey, we need to get you guys in here again. We have a lot, a lot of like, technical questions for you, and I want to bring in my technical team. We came in again, and this time I brought my, my developers, and we uh, basically got grilled for two hours on high-end technical questions on how we would solve X and how we would solve Y and how we would solve Z. And uh, our initial contact that brought us in um, uh, was a hundred percent sure that we were going to get this contract and uh, and so we continue to invest in giving them value and value 
uh, before we had a full engagement with them. And, and then what happened is uh, after three meetings and about 12 hours of my staff's time, uh, and significant investment in, in resources also traveling to and from uh, their location, we, uh, we did not get the job. And we had nothing to show for it. Which doesn't happen often because we usually charge for discovery. But in this scenario, our contact um, was so warm and so genuine and so trustworthy that we believed we were going to get it. We didn't get it. Instead of being angry with her, instead of being upset, uh, which, by the way, my ego was raging, I was very angry in the situation, I instead uh, thanked her for the opportunity and, uh, and wished her the best of luck. She was so angry that she quit her job. And she went and got a job at a much larger organization where she promptly hired us for 10 projects that were worth 20 times what that project was. And it's just because we treated her with grace in spite of getting slapped in the face. Uh, all right, so these guys. <laughs> um, This one kind of, this one kind of hurt. We, we did some work for a for a, a lawn services company. They're regional. They do, they 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 were medium sized when they came to us, and we helped uh, dramatically increase their business. And I think we also cut their their Google AdWords costs down by like eighty percent, uh, and and increased their conversions while cutting their costs by that much. It was just like astronomical, astronomical work, literally worth millions for, for a fraction of uh, what, what he was paying us to do that work. And uh, we did that work for a couple years. It was a fantastic relationship. And then out of the blue one day, uh, he said, hey guys, uh, your services are no longer needed. This will be, this will be the last, uh, last period on the contract. Uh, and it, it shocked me to my core. I thought this was like our, our guaranteed, like, you know, golden egg for life type client based on the results that we got for them. Uh, and again, there's an, there's an ego thing. I, I immediately started digging in. I, I needed to know why we were getting fired, what was going on. He was like, ah, you guys really haven't, you know, I mean, it was great the first year or so, but you guys haven't done anything new for me in a while. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I see the value anymore. Right? This is an important lesson to learn. Even if you create a ton of value, it doesn't guarantee loyalty. It does not guarantee loyalty. Uh, but I kept digging and I kept digging and I kept digging. I still couldn't quite figure it out. It, it was, they were relatively weak sauce excuses uh, of, of why he left us. And so because of that, it made me even angrier and I, wanted, I really, really wanted to like, give him a piece of my mind. Instead, what I did, uh, in this case, I, I had to do a lot of meditating on this account. Instead, what I did um, was I wished him the best of luck and uh, I, I, as a parting gift, um, put together a, a small package of lifetime value that we created for his organization and as a reminder. And then I asked him where he was going, and he told me the company that he was going with, and then I did research on that company. And uh, I found out that they're not really a great company. So I gave him some predictions of what's going to happen. Uh, I said, in regards to your SEO results, which is a huge part of your business, uh, if somebody else takes over the work that we're doing, those results will still stand for another 6 to 12 months or so. But after that, they're going to start to decline. And once they start to decline, it's going to be very, very expensive to get them back to where they are. So be very, very careful with what you're doing. I hope you, I, you know what you're doing. But bon voyage and good luck and, and Godspeed, sir. And uh, eight months later, he hired us back at twice what he was paying us before. Because we weren't jerks when he rolled out the door, and because our predictions came true. If you deeply understand your industry and what's working, and, and why somebody might be leaving, or what's going on, uh, giving predictions for the future does not cause you any harm. As long, as long as you're not being a jerk about it, as long as you're not letting your ego get in the way and say, just. Just like we all have this natural reaction, like uh, if somebody breaks up with us and starts going out with somebody else, our natural reaction is, is like, oh my gosh, that person is terrible. You just threw your life away. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, doing your research 
and following through. So in this scenario, he ended up going with some vertical company that only did like one thing and they didn't do it very well. And I'd asked a lot of other people about it. And come to find out later, he made the decision because, uh, uh, because he was attracted to the salesperson. Uh, ended up uh, dating her for a little while, and then his business tanked, and, uh, and then the relationship tanked, and, uh, and it came back around. Um, so uh, it, this one, this one, this one was devastating. Uh, we were working with a with a local tech company uh, in Orlando. Uh, they were super demanding. Uh, they. Uh, we gave them we gave them a pretty good deal because they were a startup. They didn't have a lot of funding yet, and uh, I was personally interested in them being successful. And uh, even though we gave them a great deal, uh, which cut our margins very slim, they were more demanding than most clients. So I think everybody in here who's done agency or client services work before, uh, there's this general general uh, pattern of of the cheapest clients being the hardest ones to work with. Uh, this was definitely right, right in that scenario. Um, this particular project uh, ended up burning out my team, and this was this was one of the only projects we've ever worked on where we were just kind of roped into it, and we were so deep in the project that once the client started getting overly demanding, and instead of being uh, nice about his demands, he was being um, brash and. Uh, and argumentative and ac ac accusatory with my team at every at, at every level of this project, and uh, it got to the point where it was just creating a toxic culture. Uh, I, I literally lost two of my most valued employees because of this one project. Uh, just people just didn't want to work for this guy. Uh, he was just terrible to work for, uh, and it didn't matter what we did; it was never good enough. Um, and so. Uh, 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 it was a shame. I hadn't done my homework ahead of time, but apparently uh, uh, a lot of other people had worked with them in the past, and they all had similar experiences. Um, uh, but at the end of it, because I lost two team members, uh, it was they, they, they left right around the same time that we launched the project. And, and the client was still messaging these team members who had quit. And, and the client was not getting any response. So he's making the assumption that, uh, oh my gosh, they, they hate me, and they, don't, uh, and, and they clearly are dropping the ball and don't want to work with me anymore, so that means they're probably going to start talking about me around town. So uh, this guy promptly starts going to all the tech events and talking about how bad of a job we did on his project and how terrible of an agency we are. This is the first time this had ever happened in our 12 years of doing business. No one had ever said negative things about us to other people in the community. Uh, and in this universe, uh, your reputation is everything. And uh, uh, I know that we did a fantastic job. I know our team delivered above and beyond. And so I had to do one of one of the things that I hate more than anything else in this, on this planet, I had to confront another person about their misbehavior. And not just another person, this is another uh, CEO of, uh, of, 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 of a big company. And I had to confront them about bad, bad behavior. Uh, I, I prepared for this meeting for two weeks. And, uh, and here's, here's, here's how the low road might look like. I accuse him of the bad behavior, I tell him how amazing of a job we did in spite of what he thinks, and then I tell him how bad his behavior was, and I tell him that my team members quit because of him, and that he cost me all of this, and I can't believe he's doing that. That's the low road. Instead what I did was I swallowed my pride, I sat across from him, and I said, I know for a fact that you would never say things like this about my company or my agency. I know you would never do that. You are too big of a person for that. You also know this is a small world and there's no such thing as a perfect project and there's probably problems on both sides. And if my team was saying the same things about your team, that nobody wins in this situation. 
but maybe some people on your team are saying things. By the way, I knew that he was the one saying it because, because I knew the people that he was talking to, and apparently, uh, yeah, I, ha I had the inside scoop. I knew who it was. But instead of pinning him to the wall, instead of putting his ego in a position of having to defend, I told him that I was sure he would never do that. And I also told him what it, what it cost the agency, but I did not blame him for my team members firing. What I instead said was, hey, I had a couple team members leave. It was very, very stressful. And I apologize that the communication wasn't great uh, at, at the launch of your project. And uh, it's a lesson for us to learn and, and a way for us to get better. I took, I took blame that maybe I didn't need to take, and I gave him an escape. And the end result of that, no one on his team nor he ever said anything bad about our organization again. Uh, and and uh, while we don't do business with them anymore, both his reputation and ours were preserved and protected. Um, and I think you can imagine that if I had taken the low road, how that might have played out. Awesome. All right, so we are we are on the finish line here, and uh, we're about to jump into some questions. I think we got a couple minutes for questions. Or okay. questions? Questions? We have 15 minutes. 15 minutes for questions. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to jump into my. I'm going to skip a couple and I'm going to jump to the last one and then we'll take questions. So um, this is. Uh, I've told this story before, but this one is especially important. Uh, this one isn't a client firing. This is. This is me being fired by an employee. So uh, a, a while back, um, I don't know. It was probably more like seven or eight years now, we had, a, uh, we had a team member that worked for us for, for a short period of time. I want to say it was uh, less than a year. Normally when we hire developers who, who don't have a, a, a lot of experience, um, there's a significant investment in, in teaching them and, and helping level them up uh, before they finally start to, to create value for the organization. Um, but uh, uh, this, uh, so normally, we really kind of need them to work in our organization for about two years for us to get a return on investment. And uh, if anybody leaves um, prior to that two-year period, it is a, it's a huge loss to the organization as far as, as, far as what we did. Um, and uh, this, uh, this team member rolled out around the eight or nine month mark. Um, they were really, really starting to get good. Um, and, uh, and, and they were definitely going places. And it, and it, and it hurt. It hurt a lot. Um, I really expected them to be with the organization for a long time. And so my, my gut reaction, my instinct, was to, to hold them accountable and, uh, and, and to tell them you know, that they're making a huge mistake and I can't believe they do that to us and um, you know, that, that, that whole deal. Uh, uh, but I, instead, um, uh, I asked them why. And uh, uh, I didn't really get good reasons, but uh, I, I think it was probably because they didn't get along well with our senior developer at the time. So, you know, they probably had good reasons to leave. So instead I just said, I'm glad we could be a part of the chapter in your life, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your, in your future uh, endeavors, and let me know if you ever need anything. Um, which, by the way, that, that's, a, that's a hard thing. But if you plan on hiring people, if you plan on growing an agency, uh, probably the most important thing that you can take to your heart when it comes to employees is that your job is to lift them up, your job is to be a servant to them, and your job is to realize that this isn't necessarily a lifestyle or a life mission to them the same way it is for you as an entrepreneur, that it's really just going to be a chapter in their life. And it's your job to make it a positive chapter, one where both parties walk away enriched from it. Um, but again, uh, took the high road in the situation and, and didn't, didn't share with them emotionally how I was feeling, uh, but instead wished them, wished them the best. Um, and and uh, about, a, about a year or so, maybe two years after that, um, that, that person um, was organizing a, a, a local conference and invited me to come and speak at that conference. And uh, that, was, that was my first work camp. And that was also uh, the place and the day uh, that I also met that mentor that I mentioned earlier that ended up uh, in, in three sentences being worth about $30,000, just one conversation alone. Uh, 
But over the years since going to that first WordCamp, I have met so many incredible people. I have met so many amazing people who have taught me so much about, about my own business, about uh, how to be a good leader, uh, and, and, and also how to be a good teacher, and also how to be a good student. Uh, it's such a rich and powerful community that we've all built here. And, um, and, and it's important that we all find a way to put our ego aside when it comes to being fired or firing. Uh, and, and take the high road uh, every time. And uh, don't forget that 10 years from now, your best clients probably won't be your best clients. This is temporary. You are going to grow. Uh, and, and, and the people that are around you and people that surround you are going to change. And, and they're either going to grow with you or they're going to change. So uh, yeah, your mistakes now, your pain now, is what you're going to call your experience later. Thank you. Uh, questions? We've got 10 minutes ish. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me, uh, I'm going to put up, put up uh, some. Here we are. This is, this is my AMA, and I'll, while the questions are going on, I'll put the uh, slide information up. If the screen goes away or if you still need it, let me know. Uh, all right. Yeah, what do you got for me? I'm hoping to have a conversation with young people and having a fire. How would the conversation go if you're having to fire someone? Yeah, so uh, in a small business, you don't have an HR company. Uh, and the only advice I can give you there is it's going to suck. And if it, if it doesn't suck, then you're doing it wrong, <laughs> meaning it's going to hurt internally. Um, the event itself, uh, I've only done this a handful of times. Even though I've been in, in, in business for a very long time, uh, I, haven't, I haven't had to do a lot of firings. But I will say this, from the few that I've done, uh, the key is short, professional, to the point, and then, and then, and then separate quickly. Uh, do not hang around. You can answer a couple questions, but then shut it down. Uh, do not draw it out. It's just like it's just like a breakup. Uh, if you're if you're breaking somebody's heart, they're going to want to cling to you and ask you a million questions and follow you around and sometimes do damage to your stuff. Like it's emotional. It's not professional at that point for for somebody who's getting fired. Um, but uh, assuming this is in person, right? Um, so my the, always 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 just professional. There are no personal attacks. Uh, you won't accept personal attacks. Either, like if somebody starts to say anything negative on a personal level, you shut it down. Um, and then, uh, and then on top of that, as a recommendation, if they have access to any sensitive stuff uh, prior to the meeting, um, shut that down as well. No matter how much you love that person or trust that person or think they're your family or whatever it is, uh, firings can make people weird. And if you if you accept that uh, emotions may come to the surface, and you are just calm and professional and you're in the middle of a storm and you're just weathering a storm uh, and just short clean professional close it down don't drag it out don't try and give a million reasons don't try to give them your whole thought process on why it's happening just here's the here's the main reason or here's the main two reasons uh, we're gonna have to let you go uh, thank you so much for everything that you've done you're amazing I think you're gonna do greater things somewhere else right that's 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 how you're doing it. You, you you're still killing them with kindness out the door. You offer them a uh, Yeah, if you think they deserve it, absolutely. Um, uh, in some cases, you may be paying them for for you know you may be giving them some some runway, uh, depending on how how valuable they were. If they weren't valuable at all, then probably no runway. But. Um, you know, sometimes these things go, you have to make a determination based on, on who they are and what they brought to your company, right? So, yeah. Out of heart? Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's a couple. I think hers was up first. Yeah. As a follow up to that, so the, the advice to keep it short and sweet when you are doing the firing, and then the other advice when you are being fired, you can figure out why. Yeah. Like, how do you reconcile so, that? So it's, it's just about asking questions. It can still be short and sweet, but you still have to, I mean, there's only a couple questions you can ask when you're getting fired. Why am I being fired? Is there anything better we could have done? Is there anything we're missing here? Uh, and, and 
Yeah, I mean, it's really only a couple questions, right? And it, they're the same questions that you might ask if you're being fired. Was it something that I did? What Could I have done anything better? Um, maybe I'll ask for a letter of recommendation, you know, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's still short and sweet both ways. Okay. Um, but like I said, some clients are not going to want to... Like, same thing, when you're firing somebody, you may not want to give them your whole thought process, right? You're just keeping it short and sweet. But sometimes you can get more out of a client by digging. And sometimes that's that's where the, the, the gold is at. Uh, and it's, it is a little bit different between the agency and client versus boss and employee, right? So, yeah. Uh, uh, firing clients when they're completely, uh, as you said, for instance, this uh, wholesaler or, or the tech company was uh, completely toxic mm -hmm. to your employees. Uh, maybe one of the decisions would have been firing the, the client before it affected your whole organization. It happened to me as well. Yes. So when you decide that and how to do it? So that's a great question. I actually skipped over the slide where I got into, into that one a little bit. So this will give me an opportunity to hit that real quick. Um, we, we have a, um, what I would call a simple and elegant way of firing clients. And I think everybody in this room could, could benefit from this method of firing clients. Um, let's just make the assumption that you've already decided to fire a client um, for whatever reasons. Let's just make that assumption. When you get to that point in the relationship, whether because it's toxic or because they harass a team member or if they were just a terrible person and they're doing personal attacks or if they're, they're overly demanding and uh, they don't appreciate your value, whatever, whatever the reasons are. So you've gotten to the point where you need to fire a client. Uh, I highly recommend taking the road of letting them fire themselves. There's a little bit of a magic to this. Uh, if you fire a client, you burn a bridge. And you burn your ability to get more business from them in the future. Uh, and your ability to maybe get referrals from them in the future. But if the client fires themselves, then no bridges are burned and there's still opportunity in the future. So this is the path that I take. Uh, if, uh, and it, de it depends on where the conflict is. Now, don't get me wrong, there are exceptions to the rule. If, if a client is, is sexually harassing somebody or, or, or um, using profanity and demeaning members of your team, that's an unequivocal, you're fired, good day sir situation, that's different. But if it's for, for professional reasons, let's say they're too demanding or you're not getting enough value from the client or the client's just a pain to work with and you just don't really want to work with them anymore, uh, it, what we end up doing is saying, uh, so we've, we've uh, taken a close look at this account. We are um, finishing up an evaluation. We're, we're planning on getting back to you if uh, 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 we need to meet with you within the next couple of weeks to review our findings. So we give them some a little bit of prep time to know that something's coming, right? So there's no, like, I'm calling you out of the blue and we're going to have a weird conversation. It's like, hey, we're auditing your account. We notice that there's some, uh, there's some issues on the account that we really need to deal with. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to work through this and come, come to you with our findings and see if we can find a, a, a positive way to, to resolve these issues. So, and then we come to them in that meeting and we say, hey, we've analyzed the account and we realize that uh, on this particular account, we're, we're actually putting in a lot more work than we expected and, uh, and the margins are just not there, unfortunately. We'd love to work with you some more, but the value just isn't there for our organization. Um, it might not be a good fit based on our sizes or, or maybe our culture, we're not, or communication styles, that might be causing the issues. Uh, uh, that being said, um, we've got two options here. Uh, either uh, we, can, we can reset the contract uh, over here at, at this rate, a different hourly rate or a different flat rate pricing for everything that they do going forward. Uh, or uh, alternatively, uh, and you can just you can give them another another option of different ways to do business with you. But basically, the, the line is, is here you go. You get to choose. Both of these solutions are the only way that will allow it to work for you. So maybe the other solution is, let's say you have a communication problem with the client. Uh, we need we need your team to either replace this person with somebody else so that you can work with us because there's a conflict of communication. Or let's say um, someone on their team is, uh, not someone on their team, but let's say uh, they keep calling us like out of hours or weekends or they're, they're violating whatever your, your rules are in your organization. 
if, uh, so you need to change all of these things and we're at this rate, or, or, uh, or we can help you find another agency. So we're giving them two options, right? We're not firing them. We can help you find another agency, we'll be happy to give you some recommendations for somebody who's a better fit for you, or, or we can reset, here's all the new rules and the new pricing. And usually the new rules and the new pricing are so far out of their league that there's no universe where they're gonna choose that option. Right? So now they are graciously saying, oh, we'd love your help finding somebody else who's a better fit for us. And they fire themselves. Right? And so you get to keep that friend and you don't burn a bridge. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, we're good. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, I'm going to jump over. Well, actually, I think this thing's closing down. Is there a closing um, They're closing Not comments? Not tomorrow night. Okay, tomorrow. Uh, there are some unofficial after parties. Um, Pressable or Wapu.us have information on that on their Twitters. Um, otherwise, enjoy your evenings. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for coffee. All right, I'll be here tomorrow. So if anybody has any more questions, hit me up uh, tomorrow as I wander around and get in trouble. Thank you.